most holy Lord and Father we know, and from the chronicles and books of the ancients, we find that among other famous nations, our own, the Scots, has been graced with widespread renown. They journeyed from Greater Scythia by the way of the Tyrrhenian Sea and the Pillars of Hercules, and dwelt for a long course of time in Spain among the most savage tribes, but nowhere they could be subdued by any race, however barbarous. Thence they came. 1,200 years after the people of Israel crossed the Red Sea to their home in the West, where they still live today. They first drove out the Picts. They utterly destroyed and even though very often assailed by the Norwegians, the Danes and the English, they took possession of that home with many victories and untold efforts. And as the historians of old time bear witness, they have held it free of all bondage ever since. In their kingdom have reigned 113 kings of their own royal stock, the line, unbroken by a single foreigner. The high qualities and deserts of these people were that they were not otherwise manifest to gain glory enough from this that the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, our Lord Jesus Christ, after his passion and resurrection, called them, even though settled in the outermost parts of the earth, almost the first of his holy faith. Nor would he have them confirmed in that faith by merely anyone, but by the first of his apostles, by calling, although second, a uh, third in rank, the most gentle, St. Andrew, the blessed Peter's brother, and desired him to keep them under his protection as their patron forever. The most holy fathers, your predecessors, gave careful heed to these nation came under their protection and indeed did live in freedom and peace up to the time when that mighty prince, the king of the English, Edward, the father of the one who reigns today, when our kingdom had no head and our people harbored no malice or treachery and were then unused to wars or invasions, came in the guise of a friend or an ally to harass them as an enemy, the deeds of cruelty, massacre, violence, pillage, arson, imprisoning prelates, burning down monasteries, robbing and killing monks and nuns, and yet other outrages without number which he committed against our people, sparing neither age nor sex, religion nor rank. No one could describe nor fully imagine unless he had seen them with his own eyes. But from these countless evils, we have been set free by the help of him who, though he afflicts, yet heals and restores by our most tireless prince, king and lord, the lord Robert. He, that his people and his heritage might be delivered out of the hands of our enemies, met toil and fatigue, hunger and peril like another Maccabeus or Joshua and bore them cheerfully. Him who divine providence his right of succession according to our laws and customs which we shall maintain unto the death and the due consent and assent of us all have made our prince and king to him as to the man by whom salvation has been wrought unto our people, we are bound both by law and by his merits that our freedom may still be maintained. And by him, come what may, we mean to stand. Yet if he should give up what he has begun and 
agree to make us or our kingdom subject to the English or to the King of England, we should exert ourselves at once to drive him out as our enemy and a subverter of his own rights and ours and make some other man who was well able to defend us, our king, for as long as but a hundred of us remain alive, never will we on any conditions be brought under English rule. It is in truth not for glory nor riches nor honors that we are fighting but for freedom for that alone which no honest man gives up but with life itself therefore it is, the Reverend Father and Lord, that we beseech your holiness with our most earnest prayers and suppliant hearts, inasmuch as you will, in your sincerity and goodness, consider all of this, that since with him whose vice-regent on earth may it please you to admonish and exhort the King of England, who ought to be satisfied with what belongs to him, since England used to want to be enough for seven kings or more, to leave us poor Scots in peace who live in this poor little Scotland, beyond which there is no dwelling place, and covet nothing but our own. We are sincerely willing to do anything for him, having regard to our condition that we can to win peace for ourselves. This truly concerns you, Holy Father, since you see the savagery of the heathen raging against the Christians, as the sins of the Christians have indeed deserved, and the frontiers of Christendom being pressed inward every day, and how much it will tarnish your holiness's memory, if which... God forbid the church suffers eclipse or scandal in any branch of it during your time. You must perceive. The Christian princes who for false reasons pretend that they cannot go to help of the holy land because of wars they have on hand with their neighbors. The real reason that prevents them is that making war on their smaller neighbors, they find quicker profit and weaker resistance. But how cheerfully our Lord, the King, and we would too go there if the King of the English would leave us in peace. He from whom nothing is hidden well knows, and we profess and declare it to you as the vicar of Christ and to all Christendom. But if your holiness puts too much faith in the tales the English tell, uh, <laughs> and will not give sincere belief to all of this, nor refrain from favoring them to our prejudice, then the slaughter of bodies and the perdition of souls and all the other misfortunes that will follow inflicted by them on us and by us on them will we believe be surely laid by the most high to conclude we are and shall ever be, as far as duty calls us, ready to do your will in all things, as obedient sons to you, his vicar, and to him as the supreme king and judge. We commit the maintenance of our cause, casting our cares upon him, and firmly trusting that he will 
inspire us with courage and bring our enemies to naught. May the Most High preserve you to his holy church and holiness and health and grant you length of days given at the monastery of our broth in Scotland on the sixth day of the month of April in the year of grace 1320 in the 15th year of the reign of our king aforesaid <laughs>